Why has Buffett stopped buying stocks? That is often the most recent question asked by many investors to Warren Buffett lately. The good thing is, he has quite a good answer for that. This is Investing Path. And for today's video, we will be talking about Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's thoughts when it comes to deciding that they'd rather keep their cash instead of investing it in the S&P 500, in light of the current state of the stock market and its associated prices. And so, we won't waste a second. Let's get it started. Almost anyone who's interested in the stock market and investment is well aware enough that Warren Buffett has always been a strong proponent of index investing and warning against market timing. But it appears to that recently, he's not using his own advice into practice, as Berkshire invests a major portion of its capital in treasury bills. One may think that putting the bulk of Berkshire's cash reserves into a diversified index fund until you locate a suitable acquisition target or stock to repurchase. We estimate that 112 billion balance in cash, cash equivalents, short-term investments, and T-bills at the end of 2018 would have been roughly 155 billion had you then that over the past 15 years while always maintaining the $20 billion cash buffer you seek. Now, how exactly does Warren Buffett react to this fact that the disparity between the two numbers represents an opportunity cost of more than 12% of Berkshire's current book value? Now for Warren Buffett, that is certainly a fair query, and he has no problem accepting those numbers as an alternate, in which his successor might want to utilize because, generally speaking, he prefers index funds over treasury bills. He believes that our capacity to move in late 2008 and 2009 would have been different if we had implemented that strategy in 2007 or 2008. Having a comparable policy with a billion or two billion dollars presents a different set of challenges in terms of execution, and vice versa. On the other hand, the former is a totally reasonable observation. If you look back on a bull market that lasted for 10 years, that fact becomes glaringly obvious. But he would say that it would make a lot of sense if you're working smaller numbers, and it might well make sense in the future at Berkshire if they're working with enormous numbers. As far as everyone knows, Warren Buffett has committed $10 billion last year, and there are situations under which he could have spent $100 billion very, very rapidly. These conditions are not remote, and they're not likely in any given week, month, or year. If he did, under those conditions, the money would be invested considerably more wisely than in an index fund. As a result, he and his company would have been proceeding on the assumption that opportunities to deploy money will present themselves. It is likely that they will arrive in groups, and they'll show up when other investors are hesitant to put money into a project. Meanwhile, if you are going to ask Charlie Munger about this, he'll admit that he's more careful with his money than some people. But that's a very understandable perspective. Looking back with 2020 vision, he and Warren could have invested the entire sum in a wide variety of assets that would have outperformed the S&P. He doesn't think it's a shame for a firm as large as theirs to be a little strong in cash if an opportunity or other favorable circumstance presents itself and they had plenty of it during that time. He saw Harvard students spend each and every cent they had, even their parents, prepaid tuition. So there's no need for them to do the same. They made a ton of forward commitments, huge private equity, dumped it all at once, and then had to endure two or three years of hell. Obviously, they have no interest in mimicking Harvard. On the other hand, back to Warren Buffett's thoughts, for all of us, the ability to scale quickly and widely at a high level is a major benefit of a healthy financial position. And maybe we won't get those opportunities often. But you know what? For some reason, we just can't. In the next 20 or 30 years, you can count on three occasions when gold will literally be falling from the sky, and all you have to do is step outside. However, we can predict when they'll occur and have a substantial budget to spend. That's what he'd respond if you told him that he had to choose between holding short-term government notes and investing in index funds that track the US stock market. He prefers index funds in general, 
but they are entirely optimistic. And one thing everyone must know about Berkshire is that they manage the company in a way that they believe is compatible with servicing shareholders who have invested practically all of their net worth in Berkshire. He finds himself in a similar situation, but under any conditions would he proceed in that manner. Many of their investors trust them, and many of them own substantial holdings of Berkshire compared to their overall wealth. If you follow traditional investment methods, and given that they do care about everyone's financial well-being, they have a vested interest in ensuring that no one who purchases shares of their company stock at or near its true value ever sees a loss. Warren Buffett and his company simply cannot stand the thought of having 1 million or more shareholders and would prefer to keep it at more manageable 2 million at most. They have a great predilection toward that group, and he doesn't think that they'll ever have a lot of them lose money if they are ready to stick with them for a while and they know how people behave if the world is generally disturbed and they want to be with something. Now, that ends our video for today on why Warren Buffett prefers to hold on to his cash instead of investing in S&P 500 index fund. We hope you liked this one and if you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe and bell button as well to stay updated for more of our future and recent uploads. This is Investing Path. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on our next video.